Hello, my name is Maija Talia. I work as a project coordinator for Climate Promise of Museums in Southwest Finland. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to share the concept and the best practices of our project with the Museum Next community, together with three other museum professionals involved in the project. Museums hold both their potential and responsibility to tackle environmental issues, but it's not always easy to find the best solutions to improve the museum's sustainability practices. In Southwest Finland, 13 museum organizations have joined forces to respond to the growing concern about climate change. Climate Promise is a joint project of professionally maintained museums. The project consists of concrete actions that improve museums' environmental agency and make permanent changes in their operational models. All the participating museum organizations have committed to executing at least one concrete action by the end of the year 2023. Project participants are Turku City Museum, Abavetus Aras Nova, Forum Marinum Maritime Center, Lieto Museum, Lieto Vanhalinna, Naantali Museum, Raisio Museum Harkko, Saagalund Museum, Salo Historical Museum, Sarka, the Finnish Museum of Agriculture, Turku Art Museum, Uusi Kaupunki Museum, and the museums of the Aabo Academy University Foundation. Co-development plays a key role in our project. As a matter of fact, the initiative was presented via a regional co-development network of professionally maintained museums in southwest Finland. This network is organized by Turku City Museum, which is also the regional museum of Southwest Finland. I'm going to briefly introduce the role of these regional museums. So, regional museums are experts and partners in questions concerning cultural heritage. Their duties are divided into three areas. Firstly, they promote regional museum operations. Secondly, they carry out cultural and environment work. And thirdly, they implement regional art museum tasks. In total, there are 19 regions in Finland and 32 museums with one or more areas of regional duty. Turku City Museum holds all three areas of regional responsibilities in southwest Finland. The Regional Co-Development Network of Professionally Maintained Museums which I mentioned earlier, is part of our regional duty of promoting museum operations, which includes developing partnerships and cooperation in the museum sector. Climate Promise brings together museum organizations with varying operational environments. As the operational and economical resources of the museums vary, the concrete actions that museums have chosen are very different in scale. They are all, however, making a permanent change in their operational practices. Hello everyone, my name is Selina Kiiskinen and I work as an exhibition curator at Turku Art Museum. I also coordinate the work with our sustainability practices. Turku Art Museum is one of the oldest and most representative art museums in Finland. We are also one of the few private museums in Finland and are run by the Turku Art Society. Our collection is especially famous for the golden age of Finnish art. Surrealism, self-portraits, pop and contemporary art and our exhibitions vary from old masters to the very latest contemporary art. We work through and with art because we believe in its power to change people and the society for the better. Together with artists and other museums, we share the same concern for the state of nature and we strive to influence, imagine and realize better futures with our own actions. Our initiative to co-develop sustainability practices in the network of regional museums that immediate support 
And now, together with 12 other museums, we have started the Climate Promise project for this purpose. Within the project, there are four museum organizations, including us, that have chosen to develop their operations with the help of the Finnish environmental management system called EcoCompass. The project offers important support for this work, and it's fruitful to share good ideas and best practices with other museums. EcoCompass is a practical tool for identifying, reducing and monitoring the environmental effects of an organization. With expert assistance, organizations create their own environmental programs, which include concrete goals and measures to reduce their environmental impact and increase the green handprint of their operating environment. It is owned by Finland's oldest and most influential environmental organization, the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation. Here at Turku Art Museum, we set our goals in the environmental pledge. We want to create an operating culture that permeates the entire museum's operations, which motivates the staff to make ecologically sustainable choices and improve our sustainability practices, especially in the fields that have the strongest impact. On a practical level, attention is paid to everyday choices such as uh, energy saving, waste recycling, reuse of packaging and other materials, the quantity and quality of printed products, the environmental friendliness of our subcontractors and the responsibility of museum shop products and manufacturers. Influencing is done especially through the means specific to the museum's own sector, through the contents of art and our exhibitions, responsible consumption and our public program and communication. One concrete current example is the work we have done with our upcoming collection exhibition. Handle with Care explores how art can participate and influence the resolution of the current ecological crisis. Climate Promise has four objectives. Next, I'm going to introduce them one by one. The first one is to implement concrete actions aimed at reducing climate load, such as improving energy efficiency or highlighting environmental sustainability in, in procurement. These actions reduce the museum's carbon footprint. The second one is to implement concrete actions aimed at creating a positive environmental impact by advising museum customers and other stakeholders on how to make more sustainable choices and why it is important to act responsibly toward the environment. These actions increase the museum's positive carbon handprint. Some concrete actions the museums have chosen contribute to both of these two objectives, as Selina's case example from Turku Art Museum indicated. As I mentioned earlier, co-development plays a key role in our project, and it's also its third objective. We aim to share expertise and learn together about the museum's potential in the environmental field. In modern times, environmental sustainability should be placed in a central position in the operational practices of all cultural institutions. To do so, these institutions, including museums, need to take a proactive role. By working together, we can share best practices and find common solutions on how to make our operational practices more sustainable. The project organizes regular training sessions on topics suggested by the participating museums. Monthly online training offers perspectives and practical advice for the staff members of the 13 museums involved. 
So far, we've had online training in environmental management, sustainable museum shop procurement, and carbon footprint calculations, to mention a few. Training sessions include a theoretical introduction to the topic by an expert, and a practical example from the museum sector. The practical examples may come from our own museums or from outside the project. In addition, Climate Promise organizes biannual training events that are open to everyone. Last autumn, we learned about solar panels and renewable energy in historically significant environments. This spring, well, last week to be specific, we had a training event on how museums can cherish biodiversity and prevent nature loss. And finally, the fourth objective is to boost and gain visibility to the museum's environmental agency. Museums are sometimes seen as neutral spaces, which is far from the truth. Museums have always functioned as mirrors of society. They reflect the ideas and values of their time, and they participate in the construction of the societal systems of which they are part. As it is not possible to separate museums from the rest of society, they need to be accountable for how they, as an institution, contribute to the creation of a more sustainable future. It is essential to execute concrete actions to improve the museum's environmental agency and inform the public about it. I dare say that museum visitors expect museums to promote sustainability in their operational practices, and as a valued institution, it is our duty to respond to it. In our project, we have noticed that museums' environmental agency interests the public. Climate Promise has gained media coverage in local newspapers, as well as in the regional branch of the Finnish broadcasting company Yle. Co-learning doesn't happen just among museum professionals. We learn and develop ourselves together with the communities around us. As we do so, knowledge about the museum's environmental agency reaches new audiences. Hello, my name is Anne Sjöström and I work as the director of the Small Museum of Nantali. Our museum is one of the 13 participating museums in the project Climate Promise of Museums. Nantali Museum is located in the old town of the city, a protected area with wooden buildings and narrow lanes. The buildings are privately owned and many of the inhabitants belong to a neighborhood association founded in 2011 for cooperation, for promoting the well-being of the inhabitants and for protection of the cultural heritage and the buildings of the area. We have had plans for cooperation with the association for a while and with this project, we found a natural way for starting it. As we think that spreading information is one of the most important roles of all museums, we saw an opportunity here. Nantali Museum is now arranging three events for the members of the association, with themes from the Climate Promise project adapted for the area and the members. We have planned this together with a small group of association members. We also hope that our cooperation will continue with different issues after this project. Owning and living in an old protected wooden building brings many issues to decide about. We invited assistant professor Panu Savolainen to the first event in March to talk about the life cycle of buildings more widely and also about the role of areas with wooden houses in the built environment, mainly from the climate angle. Panu Savolainen is assistant professor of history of architecture and architectural conservation at Aalto University.
The second event will be a bit earthlier. In May we are planning to invite uh, the society members to our museum garden for information about composting food waste, about which traditional plants to plant for attracting useful insects, especially pollinators. Other themes will be included too, like plant swapping. Uh, in Finland, the question of placing solar panels and other renewable energy systems into historically significant built environments has been a topic of vivid discussion. Our third event will take place in September. How do different forms of renewable energy suit into old protected environments? Are solar panels are allowed? How should air heat pumps be placed? We plan to invite specialists to talk about these themes and we are preparing this evening together with our city architect. With our three events we wish to reach our neighbours but also other inhabitants of Nantali who own old buildings. We are happy to be able to raise the environmental liability of museums to common knowledge and hopefully to contribute to a sustainable lifestyle in the area. The Finnish museum sector is wide-ranging and varied. There are 151 professionally maintained museums in Finland. To be eligible to receive state funding via the Ministry of Education and Culture, professionally maintained museums must fulfill the operational requirements addressed in the Finnish museum law. In addition to the professionally maintained museums, there are several hundred non-professional museums in our country. The vast majority of professionally maintained museums do receive state funding, including all 13 museum organizations in our project. However, there is a great variation in their operational and economic resources. For example, Turku City Museum is the biggest municipal museum organization in Finland, with six separate museum locations and over 100 full-time staff members. At the other end of the scale, there is a museum participating in Climate Promise that has one location and two full-time staff members. We really do have museums of all shapes and sizes participating in our project. We have locations from medieval to modern, we have art museums, cultural history museums, a national special museum focusing on maritime history, and another one focusing on agriculture. Some museums are maintained by the municipality, some by a trust or a foundation. We have museums located in the middle of Turku, one of the biggest cities in Finland, and some museums are in rural settings. The versatility of our museums is a huge asset. Museums of all kinds must pay attention to their sustainability practices, so the project produces valuable information about what kind of possibilities and challenges are related to promoting environmental sustainability in the museum sector. The training sessions organized by Climate Promise are met with a warm welcome. As the themes of the trainings are suggested by museum professionals themselves, they really contribute to the actual need of museums in southwest Finland. Funding, or the lack of it, seems to be a general challenge in the museum field. Our project is funded by the Finnish Heritage Agency. With external funding, it has been possible to hire a full-time employee to support museums in executing their concrete actions and organize training sessions on various topics. The project budget also includes a moderate management reserve for the museum's experiments and small acquisitions. However, this management reserve is not meant to cover the expenses of the concrete actions chosen by the participating museums. It should be borne in mind that investments in more sustainable practices, such as energy efficiency, 
are economically profitable in the long run. Cooperation and partnerships are at the core of our project. We work together to make museums more sustainable. Museums can and should create diverse partnerships to strengthen their positive environmental impact. Hello, my name is Mia Juva and I work as a curator at Salo Historical Museum. The museum comprises Salo Electronics Museum and seven local museums in different parts of Salo. I'm delighted with this opportunity to present the beautiful Meritalo Museum and its garden. Meritalo is located in the Salo city centre. The first primary school of Salo was established in the building in 1873. Back then, teachers Hanna and Jaakko Kallio lived here in Meritalo with their family. The school garden, maintained by Hanna Kallio, was exemplary. In the autumn of 1910, Meritalo participated in a garden show held in Turku and won an honourable mention for its pioneering work. The museum garden has been restored lately. The grant we received from the Finnish Cultural Foundation made our dream possible. The restoration was distributed over two years and it was finished last summer. In Climate Promise project, we further the development of our museum garden in cooperation with Natural Resources Institute Finland. In recent years, Natural Resources Institute Finland has been building a network of actors that maintain backup collections of genetically significant plants in semi-public spaces. Plant species are chosen according to the historical background and regional relevance of the location in question. Our concrete action is to establish a backup collection of old rubbub varieties and old pioneers. The rubbub collection of Natural Resources Institute Finland also includes varieties grown in the Salo area, which we now have a chance to obtain for the garden in Meritalo. We had a strong desire to revive the museum garden so that it could serve as an open and accessible urban courtyard. The primary purpose of the project was to create an environment that would be closely linked with the building and its history. In the collection of Salo Historical Museum, there are hundreds of photographs taken by Hanna and Jaakko Kallio's son, Niilo Kallio. They were the main source of information in the project to restore the garden in Meritalo. The photographs were used to identify plants that have been growing in the courtyard. In just a few years, we have managed to organize workshops for children, focusing on biodiversity and its preservation, as well as garden-themed tours, highlighting the importance of green urban oases for biodiversity. Residents in the area have welcomed the project and started planning their own activities to support the museum. Hopefully, they have also started thinking about more sustainable solutions to safeguard biodiversity in their own gardens. With our project, we want to inspire and challenge other museums to develop cooperation networks that aim to improve museums' climate agency. The core message of Climate Promise of Museums in Southwest Finland is that museums of all kinds must take a proactive role in finding the best sustainability practices for themselves. With cooperation and support from other museum organizations, it is easier to put them into practice. Thank you for joining Selina, Anne, Mia and me for this Museum Next presentation. We hope you found our presentation inspirational and insightful.